the GPS can now be seen indicating that it is looking for satellites by the blinking blue light. It is on the top. The LiDAR has to be facing down below. It is operable. Now, the way that they are wired can be seen here on the Mamba map. The SCL and SDA are the extra wires right here and here for GPS. Otherwise, you need a ground, you need a UART, you need a 5 volt. The LiDAR is on the 4X on the underside. It can't be over here on 2X because that's part of the DJI configuration. So RXTX4. In order to attach the computer to a powered up quad on iNav, you have to power up the quad in advance or you will get a conflict. And believe me, I got plenty of headache from that not knowing that problem. Now, we go into Outputs, and we tell the software that we want, that we understand the risk, check the motors. Now, my motors uh, are set in BL Heli 32 to spin outward. So, although while they're spinning, they look like they're spinning the proper direction, they are spinning the opposite direction. And we will need to, in this case, go into um, the CLI and give it a written command to explain that the motors are in reverse because here in the window, oh, they do not give you the option to have reversed motors, only to have reversible motors. So all four are working. They are in the correct positions. They're spinning the direction I want them. We're done here. So coming back, we need to go to the CLI. And now that you know my motors go backwards, we need to tell the ESC that they are backwards or we need to at least tell INAV that they're backwards, we type in set motor underline direction underline inverted space equals, no, no, space equals space on return. Okay, then we need to save that. Type in save. So when we come back, we'll go right back there. And we will type in get inverted. Uh, in lowercase, apparently. And it will show anything that's possibly inverted. We are only interested in this line, the motor direction inverted equals on, that's confirmation. In order to get out of here, type in exit. And it will resave. Reboot. Now, we need to set up switches. So here in modes, we'll set up my arming. And I'm going to put that on channel 6, which is the front left, no, top left switch, which has been in an accident. So it's kind of lame. I won't use it for anything else. Angle mode, I will put on channel uh, 
8, which is the front right switch. So my first position will be angle, my second will be horizon, and the third will be acro. I will leave that open so that will get activated later when we turn on switches. You'll see that acro thing at the bottom light up. Navigation, uh, we need return to home if we're using that, so um, I'm going to put that on um, channel 7. That's on the top right of my controller, and let's make that the third position. Um, I want position hold, so we'll leave that as the second position. Uh, uh, the next one is waypoints. We're not ready to, to engage any of that. And that's that for that section. Air mode, we, can, we want to be able to turn that on and off. So let's hit air mode and put that on, uh, on channel 5. And then we'll put all our superfluous things like beeper and uh, the failsafe, I think. Beeper, put that in the second position on channel 5, and failsafe on the, in the third position on channel 5. And, and we save that. Just double checking to make sure I like make my channels are correct. And then we can go save that. I'm gonna adjust that button. Alright. And that's saved. Now we can turn on the battery power and check our switches on our on our radio. Um, to make sure that they activate. That's arm. That's working. Here is my angle switch. Horizon mode and acro mode. You see light up at the bottom in the third position. Uh, channel 7. Position hold. Return to home. Channel 5. We have our air mode and our other two modes, which are failsafe and beeper. So I have them in that order so that once I hit failsafe and it does its thing, I hit beeper and I can hear it. Right. Now we will go to the failsafe page and establish return to home. It wasn't turned on. It has its own page because of its multiple commands. Save that. Reboot. Now, when we return, we will look for the failsafe. That's this little parachute. Stay here long enough for GPS to engage. Okay, returning with power to the aircraft, we will then check the receiver. It is already set up in advance. You don't see this page as such until you have chosen these things. So, uh, my radio wouldn't have shown up with these colored bands um, until I had set up that it was a serial receiver and that I was on um, S-Bus transmission. Now, down here, let's get a close look at the Throttle Expo. What I do is set this at zero away from 50. So here's how it comes. And I do the opposite. I make the, th the mid zero so that I can curve upward from there so that there are no sudden throttle uh, maneuvers. Uh, same with my the whole expo of the RC of the controller itself. Uh, I set so that 
it does not respond too quickly. After that, we can move up to the type of uh, channel path that we are using. These four first four channels then are just roll, pitch, yaw, and throttle. So the remaining channels that I set were channel 5 for uh, my miscellany, channel 6 for my arming. Um, my flight modes are on channel 8. Channel 7 then has my navigation, position hold, etc. Okay, that does it for this page. I'm going to save that. Coming back, we are ready to calibrate the compass. Quickly show you the switch. And what we do is the series of turns so that every side faces the ground at some point. I flip it forward around, I flip it sideways around, then I do some extra, like the spin that you usually need to do with the commercial drones, I don't know. Kill the time, it takes 30 seconds. When you're done, it should uh, provide the information on the right column there that you are calibrated, and we see a series of numbers. We assume that's correct. And then we will calibrate the optic flow, which is found here. Hit this, and it's the same nonsense, except push that button. We begin the calibration. Tip it along so the ground so that it's looking always looking down, but looking down in every direction. It doesn't need to leave the, the horizon. And that should satisfy calibration. And we'll save that and reboot. And that takes us to the end of part two.